Lord be with you. Thanks for joining us this morning as we gather today. All kinds of great things going on. And we start right at the beginning with our first hymn. The hymn for this morning, the first hymn, is 833. And the way that this hymn is written is there's a leader that sings the beginning of the hymn, and then the congregation will respond. So the vicar this morning is going to be the leader. Listen, listen, God is calling. We've done this hymn a number of times. And then the congregation comes in. Uh, Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news down at the bottom. So keep that in mind. The vicar will lead, the congregation will follow. And with that, we gather this morning to receive our Lord's good gifts. And as we, we focus on the gospel reading this morning, we see how our Lord is strong even in the face of those who criticize him. We talk a lot this morning about cancel culture, and we hear that all the time in the news. That's not new, though. That's been going on ever since the good news came into the world. So we'll uh, we'll pick up on those things from the gospel reading this morning. As we gather today, our order of service, Divine Service Setting 1 on page 151, we begin this morning with our first hymn. Listen. Jesus gave his mandate that he came to save us. Listen. In the triune name of God, listen, listen. to be faithful walking in your precepts listen listen God is calling listen listen Our order of service today, Divine Service Setting 1 on page 151. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess by sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the promise of your Savior given to you. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am only a To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. My eyes are toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. We sing verse 3 of hymn 543.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 1 through 15. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Hosea, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord, all the worlds that I command you to speak to them. Do not hold back a word. It may be they will listen and everyone turn from his evil way that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me to walk in the law that I have set before you and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets who I send to you urgently, though you have not listened then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant. And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in the truth the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. This is the word of the Lord. Please read along with me the catechetical review. The Sacrament of Holy Baptism. Second, what benefit does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues us from death and from the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all those who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. Which are these words and promises of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned. The epistle reading for this morning is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragment offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covenants must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. 
For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is, an adulterer, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of the disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good, right, and true. This is the word of the Lord. As we sing together, return to the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this morning from St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Now Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. While others, to test him, kept seeking from him signs from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges." But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through the watery places, seeking rest, and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, A woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I would invite all of our children to please come forward. Good morning. morning. Great to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us. Do you know what this is? How big is an ant? Is an ant that big? No, an an ant's really small, isn't it? How strong is an ant? They're pretty strong. They can haul a lot of stuff around. But can an ant do as much as an elephant? The elephant's a lot bigger, isn't it? Yeah. Which is stronger, the ant or the elephant? Yeah, the elephant can lift a lot of great big things, and, and if the elephant should step on the ant, what would happen? Squish. There probably wouldn't be any ant left, would there? So we can see pretty clearly that the ant is, is little bitty and weak, and the elephant is big and strong. How about this guy? Does, does he look strong? You're right. He doesn't look very strong, does he? He maybe looks strong, and then we look at this guy. Does that guy look strong? 
Yeah, look at that. He's got that big old log and he's got it way up above his head. Do you think this guy could do that? This guy wishes he was this guy. He wishes that he would be strong like this guy. Now look at this guy. You see that on the cross there? Who is that? Is Jesus strong? He's hanging on the cross. Is he alive? He's not. He died on the cross for us, didn't he? To take away our sins. That's exactly right. Is Jesus very strong right there? His, bo his body is dead, isn't it? His body isn't very strong right now, but what's Jesus going to do? He is. That's right. He doesn't stay dead. Jesus rises from the death at three days, and you know what he does? He, in, on Easter, right, he does something that is so great. He does something that no strong person could ever do. Jesus takes away all of our sins, and he tells the devil, you can't ever take away these that are mine. Jesus is so strong that the devil, once God puts his name on us in baptism, the devil can't wrestle us out of God's hands. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Now, we think a lot of times, when we think about the devil and all the things he does and we think about God, which one is stronger? God. Why? That's a good question. We always think sometimes that the devil is strong and, and God is strong and they're fighting to see which one is going to win. But remember, did God create all things? He did. He created everything at the beginning. Did God create the angels? He did, and, and remember, the devil is an angel that fell. So we know that God is more powerful than all the angels, and we know God is more powerful than all the demons and all the devils. And we know that our Savior gave up his life and looked weak so that we would know when he rose from the dead, how strong is he? Can he beat every enemy we have? Yeah. Can he promise to be with us always? Yeah. Will he protect you always? Yeah. Will he ever leave you alone? Yeah. No, because he's the strong one that loves you and has risen from the dead. Well, let's go to our Lord in prayer, shall we? Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being the strong one and protecting us and forgiving us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks guys for coming up here today. I know it.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Will you pray with me? Father of grace and mercy, we thank you again that you are the strong man, that you have rescued us from every peril, every enemy of our world. Strengthen us now in the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear saints, you heard in the gospel reading for today an exorcism, and then Jesus being criticized for that. We hear that more often than we think, maybe not about the exorcism, but about Jesus, about his word, about his promises being criticized in our world today. Jesus does that great and mighty miracle. A demon has fallen on this man. A demon has made this man his home. And the man is mute. And Jesus comes and he speaks. He tells the demon, you're not, you're not welcome here. Get out. And the demon leaves. What a great and mighty miracle of the strong man who overcomes one less strong than him. And then just as soon as that happens... The good and gracious work of God is criticized. Now I would guess if that happened in our world today, something like this where that great and mighty miracle happened, it would be played out on the news something like this. How dare he? How uncaring is Jesus? That poor demon is now homeless. Jesus kicked him out. Jesus is a racist. Jesus is a spiritual bigot. Because what's going on in our world right now is something that is not new. It's just very popular right now. Calling evil good and good evil. It's existed ever since our first parents in the Garden of Eden. Today it has an official name. It's called cancel culture. Taking something that you don't agree with and demonizing it controlling the media, putting a spin on it, making it look evil, and thereby canceling its effectiveness or even canceling its effect and its existence altogether. And to give you an idea how radical this is and how evil this cancel culture is, just look at the silly things this cancel culture has attacked in the last few weeks. Coca-Cola, Dr. Seuss, Mr. Potato Head? I'm guessing that Mr. Coffee is probably next. It's silly. But that's what evil does. Evil destroys. Evil tries to cancel. Evil tries to have its own way. And most importantly, evil tries to convince you that it is good. And good is evil. We saw it right away at the beginning when Beelzebul, the prince of demons, was there in the garden with Eve and said, did God really say? And right away, taking the pure word of God, the love and the mercy of God that he was showing to Adam and Eve and twisting it to look evil. And then to take the evil of doubting God and making that look good. The cancel culture attacks when it moves God out of creation and it moves in the God of evolution. Now there is, now the good of God in the creating process has been moved out and man has stepped into the form of creator and God is pushed out and there is no God. Well, there is a God. Man becomes his own God. Cancel culture attacks when one man and one woman together forever that God instituted in holy marriage is viewed as not acceptable. It's emotionally damaging to people who feel differently. The truth of God's word has been canceled and replaced with popular opinion and emotion. When Jesus freed this man, the cancel culture was present there at that time as well. They said, he casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. An act of love, an act of freedom that Jesus did to remove this demon from this man was spun. And now it looks like Jesus is in league with the evil one. Good is painted as evil and evil is good. Satan would have us believe that Jesus can't be trusted. 
He must be canceled. Our popular culture would have us believe the same thing. Jesus is not loving. He wants to control you who love him. Jesus is not truthful. He's manipulating your world through fear. These are clear lies from the evil one himself. Think about this image. Imagine you're standing there, you're holding your, your water glass that you will carry around, your container, and it's about two-thirds full, and you drink through it, you drink from it all the time. But what you don't realize is as you're holding that, as you're drinking from that water to sustain you, the evil one comes and he puts poison in that water and pollutes that water when you're not looking. And if you continue to drink that, it will end your life. Now imagine somebody who knows that, someone who knows about the evil one that comes up to you and brings you over to the eternal flowing fountain of good and goodness and puts that water glass under there. And the evil one, still continuing to work in our world, still continues to drop poison and pollution into that water. But as soon as that happens, that ever-flowing fountain of water Washes that, washes that pollution out and you have an unending supply of pure and good and holy water to drink. That's the hope and the promise that we have when our Lord overcomes this cancel culture that we live in in our world. That's what our life in Christ looks like. We live in the world, we're surrounded by all of these things of the world, all of the voices of the world, all of the culture, the cancel culture of the world that continues to whisper and sometimes not whisper at all. Shout very loudly that you have to behave this way, that you have to be tolerant of all things. The world pulling us away from what is good and calling it evil and calling what is evil good the world continues to do that, and our Lord continues to give us the truth. He gives us his truth through the word. He gives us his truth through his promises. He gives us his truth through the absolution that we received this morning. He gives us his truth and sustains us so that we know what evil is. And we know what good is. Good is Christ and all the things that he has done for us. In the waters of baptism, they continually flush out the lies of the evil one out of our world. It is the strength of the Holy Spirit that fights against the lies of the evil one when he tries to convince us that God is evil and your thoughts and your desires are right. It's faith that clings to Jesus that lets us clearly see what the cancel culture is and what the cancel culture tries to do. Jesus is very clear in the gospel reading for today that there is no neutrality in spiritual life, in spiritual warfare. There is no neutrality in a life in Christ. Either you are with Jesus fighting against the evil one or you're fighting against Jesus. There's no middle ground. So many people today in our world, they will make the claim that they're Christian because they know the story of Jesus, because they were in Sunday school at one point in time, and yet everything in their world shows no Christian fruit. The question has to be asked, which side are they on? Either one is with Jesus and standing against Satan or with Satan standing against Jesus. To live your life apart from the gifts of word and sacrament clearly reveals where you are in the battle. If you're fighting the evil one, if you are not where you want, excuse me, if you're not fighting the evil one and if you're not where you would like to be, you don't have to stay there. Our Lord has come into the world, the strong man, to overcome the evil one, to pull us out of the cancel culture, to pull us out of sin and death, and to bring us back to his grace and his mercy. Jesus and his full and free forgiveness is not canceled by your laziness or your apathy. Your questions and your doubts and your fears do not cancel the hope and the promise that Christ gives to us through his word and in his sacraments. 
The cancel culture of our world would have us believe that they are right and they have all the power. And yet our Lord clearly teaches us from his word that he has died for all of our sins, he has risen again, and evil cannot and will not prevail against his own word and his promises for you. The cancel culture would have us believe that good is evil, and evil is good. And it's quite the opposite, really. Right after Jesus' baptism, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Three times, the evil one came to him and says, If you are the Son of God, and he would lay out these temptations for Jesus. Three times, the evil one tried to have the Son of God fall, and therefore be ineligible to be our Savior. And each time, Jesus refuted him with the very gift of the word of God. The very things that we have, he called good, good, and evil, evil. When Jesus met the woman at the well whose sins were well known by everyone around him, he speaks the truth to her. And he spoke in a way that many today would say was hurtful. He confronts her of her very real and her very public sin. He speaks the law to her, and that does hurt, but he didn't leave her condemned. Jesus spoke the law truthfully to her so that she would hear and know that he is her Savior, that he has forgiven her and she is forgiven. And when he spoke those words of promise to her, it changed her life, and it changed how she saw things. Dear saints, we cannot put up with preaching that does not clearly identify good as good. Preaching that points us to Christ crucified and Him alone. We cannot put up with preaching that does not show us our sin clearly and tell us that if we stay on whatever path we are apart from Christ, we will die. You, we, have to demand good preaching that calls good, good and identifies evil from where it is. Because the evil is insidious and it continues trying to twist, trying to warp what we know and see. But we have the truth. We have a Savior who has risen from the dead. We have a Savior that promised us that His word is truth. We have a Savior that has promised to you that all of your sins are forgiven. And no matter how hard the evil one tries to whisper in your ear, did God really say He is beaten? He is condemned. And while like a a junkyard dog on a chain, he riles around and he barks and he growls and he tries to convince us he has all the power, he doesn't. Christ is risen. He is triumphed. He is the stronger man. And the evil one cannot beat him. When disease separated the ten lepers, do you remember that story? They were separated from their families. They were separated from church. They were separated from society. Jesus spoke with a word, and the disease was canceled, and those men were restored. When death on the cross seemed to cancel Jesus' life and our hope and his promises, Jesus canceled our condemnation there on the cross with a few simple words. It is finished, and he laid down his life for you. The devil's eternal hold on you canceled. Eternal death canceled. Good and etern- good has eternally triumphed over the evil one. And the devil has been defeated. Canceled. His power no longer to hold you. All the lies of the evil one canceled because there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Good has triumphed over evil. We're in a time when the world insists on calling evil good and good is evil. In these times, there is still hope. There is still promise. There is still Jesus risen from the dead who knows you and has claimed you by your name and has called you his own. There is promise, and there is eternal good in Jesus, risen from the dead for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Dear saints, we make the bold confession of our Christian faith in the Apostles' Creed on page 159. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful God, you do not, ex- you do not change and are not ready to hear and are always ready to hear our prayer. May our eyes be ever fixed on you, that we would always be ready to receive your forgiveness and help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the church, preserve and bless your church on earth and do not let us fall into the sin of pride or self-confidence. Grant boldness to your ministers as they preach your word to all, especially to those in need of repentance. Bless Matthew, our synod president, Scott, our district president, John, our circuit visitor, Randy, our pastor in Christ, Dennis, our vicar. Be with the missions at Trinity in Belfouche and Evergreen in Pine Ridge. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you call us to live in purity and holiness. Protect and guide Christian families to love and seek chastity and decency, learning to grow in value and all godly living. Lord, in your mercy. King of kings and judge of the earth, soften the hearts of our nation's leaders and grant them wisdom for the good of those they govern, that your word and church would not be persecuted in our land, but protected and allowed to flourish by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, the strength of the weak, hear our prayers for all who are sick, who are anxious, lonely, or oppressed in any way. We pray, Father, you'd continue to hold up Marilyn and Susan and all of their family, that you would be with Davis and Abby, Ron and Judy, Derek, Alexis and family. We pray, Father, for Doug and Cora. We ask that you'd be with Walt and Mary and Bill. Be with Eldon and his family, Steve and Yvonne, Tegan, Martin, Vonda, Linda, Rachel and Dale. We pray for Mike and Alex, Dan and Jim, Sue and Devana and Connie. Be with Jeff and Faith and Colleen. We pray, Father, that you would uphold Lori and Erica and Emil. We ask, Father, that you'd watch over all of them and grant them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, you join your word with the bread and the wine and so invite us to eat and drink. Grant that we might hear and keep your word in faith that we may worthily receive the true body and blood of our Savior in the mouths and in given to us your eternal blessings. Lord, in your mercy. All these things, Father, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we receive the offering.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do as often as ye eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand as we continue with the Noctimentus. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. We have a great treat. Our Sunday school kids will sing for us. We close with our final hymn.
Good morning. morning. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Our friends and visitors, great to have you with us as well. A couple of announcements. Jeff, Scott, have you got a mic for him? Good morning. It's on. He's got trouble. Well, next Sunday, for those that don't know and have no Facebook, is Pi Day, 314, right? Well, as Lutherans, we celebrate this much differently. We're going to have P-I-E Day, Pi Day. So between the services next Sunday, we invite you to bring pie to share with everyone. And if you're not a baker, okay, I'm not, ice cream is okay. <laughs> ice cream is a good substitute for pie because we can warm it up, and we're going to have pie alamo between services next Sunday. So look forward to that. Uh, the only other announcement for social engagement will be on the 19th, a Friday night at 6.30, We'll have our first movie night of the year. We're going to screen The Princess Bride. We've tried this three times over the last three years. Talk about cancel culture. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had that a few times. So we are going to get through it. We are going to have the movie. We'll have popcorn, bring your own beverage, and look forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you. Very good. The announcements are lined up at the back. me again. I'm talking about Hong Kong, the virtual uh, VBS that we're going to have. We are going to have a trial. Sorry, I try to keep that away from my mouth. Uh, we're going to have a trial <laughs> um, this next Friday night. So anybody that's going to be doing this needs to be here Friday night um, a little bit before 6. Okay, And we'll run through everything with you. Stop back by the table. I'll let you see the presentation, and we'll get started on this. I need more volunteers. If you can come back and talk to me, I'd sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. I think Fauna wants to talk about Vacation Bible School, which we were not able to have last year, but we are going to have this year. Uh, VBS this year will be June 21st through the 20th. 5th, 26th, something like that, that week. And so I'm looking for all kinds of volunteers, teachers, teachers' aides, music, games, arts, crafts, anywhere you can help. Um, also in the kitchen as far as for meals. Um, I know we didn't have it last year, but like just like the year before, it was just easier to have um, a well-balanced meal, and we didn't, that way we could cut out the snacks and make it a lot faster and easier for everybody. But So I'm looking for any volunteers, um, and I have the material with me today, so whoever volunteers for a certain area, I can give it to you today. So just con contact me if you have any questions or if you want to volunteer. Thank you. Why do we do Vacation Bible School? Tell kids about Jesus. Tell their parents about Jesus. Tell their grandparents about Jesus. All those things. Vickers teaching the Bible study afterwards, still in the book of Joel, I believe, ending the, the, uh, in the third chapter of Joel. And remember, Joel is our theme for our midweek Lenten services, too. In chapter 2, Joel makes this great pronouncement, return to the Lord your God, and we've been following that theme all the way through. Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock is the Bible study for uh, the Lenten Bible study, 11 o'clock, Lenten worship. And then at uh, that evening, 5.30 supper, 6 o'clock Bible studies, confirmation, 7.15 worship that evening as well. Go in his peace.